Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure, what a privilege that we have again to meet with you guys. So we will continue on with our story, your story or my story. We all have a story to tell and tonight we have an amazing guest and I'm saying amazing because all my guests are amazing. They have a story to tell. They have something, oh, some words for you that will inspire you. And remember that you're here on this earth and there's a reason that you're here. You too have a purpose in this life. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. Welcome to Space, space, space. support program for adolescent and community enrichment. The story, the story, the story. The story. your story, but mine. There are different type of stories. Some are sad, others are amazing, and some powerful. What does your story look like? Come and share with us. How did you become who you are? What has been your biggest mistake and downfall? How did you get the strength to get back up? When did you realize that you were here for a purpose? What makes you cry? What makes you smile? How would you like to be remembered? What has been the biggest lesson you have learned? Your story, your story will make an impact in so many lives. Please come and share with us. Contact Space at 857-891-4328. Again, 857-891-4328 for more information. Thank you. We are back. The Zone is here. As usual, you know my name. I'm Soraya. And tonight I have an amazing guest, as I mentioned earlier, who's here with the hope that his story will inspire you. Without further ado, welcome to Vice. Hi. Thank you for having me here. Oh, please. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Tobias, um, when I say the word Tobias, and when I'm, and I'm sure people, when they see the face, they're like, oh, this is Tobias, and I'm sure people have heard a lot about you. This man, you're going to find out about him. So if we were to start Tobias, where does the name Tobias come from? Not really thinking about um, the family structure, just Tobias. Mm -hmm. Does it mean something to you when people even say the word Tobias? So, yeah, it means <laughs> a lot to me. Um, my birth name was Toby, T-O-B-E-Y. Okay. And I grew up with uh, around the time of uh, the Disney characters, where Disney characters were called Toby, and um, what else? Ru Alice Haley created the film Roots, mm -hmm. and Toby was one of the characters in Roots. And... Um, in high school, I realized that I wanted to go really pretty much into business, and would Toby be the right name for someone aspiring to be a lawyer or a professional? Mm -hmm. So I think I was 17, and I went to Plymouth County Courthouse, paid $75, and the uh, judge wanted to know why I was changing my name, <laughs> and I told him that I wanted to have a professional name. My father's name is Frank Cowens, Jr. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's Frank Cowens the first. Oh. I felt I should be Frank. Yes. The third. Oh, okay. But I grew up Toby. Okay. So by changing it to Tobias, um, I felt it was more professional. Mm -hmm. And Tobias, uh, biblically, uh, means God is good and truthful. Ouch, ouch. God is good and truthful. So, do you feel that you really... Live up to my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try. I try. Um... Uh, you know, we all we all strive to be mm -hmm. better. Definitely, so that's the most important thing. Daily, I have something to aim and to, uh, great to try to move forward. forward. To. So mm -hmm. now, Tobias, I wonder how your mom or dad felt about you wanting to change the name. Well, my parents separated when I was three, mm -hmm. um, so my father really didn't have much input on that. But um, I did speak to my mother and. Um, she thought it was interesting, but I mean, she's always been very supportive. Okay. So it, I raised this seventy-five dollars to go <laughs> have it done. So. Well, um, you did it by yourself. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, this guy now. It's called leaf raking. Leaf raking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you'll say more about leaf raking. Now, Tobias. So, are you the first? Are you the only child? And tell us more about. Uh, I'm okay. one of. Three. I have two sisters, a sister named Sonia mm -hmm. that lives in Newton, and a sister named Jackie that lives uh, in Alabama. Okay. So I'm the oldest of three. You're the oldest of three. You just mentioned that. So uh, can I say that you were mama's boy? You can say it. <laughs> <laughs> Was it true? To a degree, but I grew up 
is the oldest of three, so I had more of a responsibility mm -hmm. of assisting my mother with my two younger sisters, mm -hmm. being the oldest. So, you know, mama's boy, not so much as much as the, I learned responsibility, I would say, at an early age. Which is very important. Yes. And being the oldest, I'm sure, like your name, Tobias, you mm -hmm. changed it to, it seems mm -hmm. like, wow, there's so much that you had to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the parent helper, mm -hmm. sometimes it must be difficult at times, because I know there are children right there, because I'm the oldest in my family. Mm -hmm. I know it is a challenge mm -hmm. to be the model for your brothers and sisters, even mm -hmm. though you don't feel that you are at that mm -hmm. stage of maturity, yet again you took upon it. And you just mentioned that your dad was um, absent. That was absent. Correct. And mm -hmm. I think it is um, it's important for any young men listening tonight. There is um, there's always hope. And the way that your parents or other people were in your life, they make mm -hmm. an impact. Now, that's why you became Tobias, that people mm -hmm. want to talk about you. So what would be the message for anyone who, you know, there's the, there's a lack of father figure in their mm -hmm. house right now, mm -hmm. and they are the oldest or the youngest, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. What would be the message that kept you, you can share, that kept you going, mm -hmm. no matter what responsibility that you had in the early age, yet mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. you became Tobias and raised some money mm -hmm. to have your name changed? Well, I, I, I feel I've been very fortunate, and I believe that um, God puts people in your life for a reason. Mm -hmm. And no matter how bad things may get or how you may feel life is impacting you, you have to look around to see what are the support people, the support systems. Mm -hmm. It could be someone in a classroom, a teacher. For me, it was my... Uh, it was my high school principal, Peter P. George. I was involved in busing. Mm -hmm. And in Boston, I was suspended like nine times in one year for doing all kind of silly things that I didn't necessarily do. But because of the racial divide in Boston mm -hmm. over busing, mm -hmm. after being suspended nine times, my, parent, my mother was required to go before the school board. Mm -hmm. And um, she decided that um, she was going to take me out of the Boston school system. We went to Taunton. Mm -hmm. Here I met a principal, Peter P. George, mm -hmm. who the first time I got in trouble, he lifted me off my feet, and he said, um, what is your problem? And I said, I like to play. Mm -hmm. So he picked up the phone, he called Peter P. George, who was the director of the Taunton YMCA, mm -hmm. and they arranged a, a scholarship for me. So after school, I would go to the YMCA, it didn't cost me any money, mm -hmm. and that was my play area. And I started improving in school, mm -hmm. but Peter P. George was Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Bob Cesarini, who was the YMCA director, was Caucasian, mm -hmm. but those were my support and the people outside of my uncles mm -hmm. who really gave me direction and sort of a, a purpose. So, wow. So what I understand is there is always someone yes. in your community or your school, wherever you your are, church. in the environment, Correct. that could be a model for you. Correct. But then again, you were able to express what it is that you want. And I think a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. or boys, they are having a hard time to mm -hmm. express themselves, to True. advocate or not, just expressing themselves to say, mm -hmm. what do they want? You knew that you wanted to, to play. Mm -hmm. But some people could look at it, and I think this guy, Peter, was amazing to mm -hmm. understand that what, what you meant by saying, I want to play. Right. So to give you that right there. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Back when I was growing up, I was considered like a hyper kind of kid. They weren't giving me drugs or medications, or I wasn't being classified as ADD or anything else. Mm -hmm. I just was a kind of a hyper kid. Mm -hmm. The classroom was my playground. I didn't really have kids to play with at home. Mm -hmm. But when I went to school, that was a place I felt comfortable mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. But it was not the environment for that. So Peter P. George understood that. Mm -hmm. And by getting me into the YMCA, he gave me a place where I could play. So I was now able to focus for school Sorry. versus playing. Mm -hmm. But the other issue was, one of the things I was suspended for, of many, in the Boston public school system, was walking down the wrong side of the hall. Now, doing that did not no. make me... Yes. They would have a line down the corridor. Mm -hmm. And you expected, when between classes, to walk in the direction on the, side, the right side yeah, of the, the line. Yeah, the right side, yes. Yeah. I didn't do that. Just um, because you didn't want to, or...? I just was not that kind of kid. <laughs> I just was not. Another thing that I was suspended for was uh, smoking. Uh, kids in my class were smoking, and the teacher went to get the principal. When he came up, there were eight or six cigarettes under my desk. I was suspended. It, 
this date and age now, I do not smoke. I've never smoked. And when my mother found out they suspended me for smoking six or seven cigarettes, mm -hmm. she knew it wasn't me. It was about the racism. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, if you were to talk about racism or cultural dependency, mm -hmm. where you were at your school, mm -hmm. did you have any role model, someone, because the person PJ was um, mm -hmm. a Caucasian man that you were saying, mm -hmm. and did you have anyone you could see how, look at someone I, that could be a father figure for me or someone that I can relate to. So was it the ratio was for the teachers was the same as the students? Well, you had a lot of black students of color going from Roxbury to a school, say, in Lower Mills. Mm -hmm. So you had white, uh, more or less white teachers teaching students of color mm -hmm. in schools that um, didn't particularly support that. So it was very hard. I mean, we had, I had a gym teacher um, that, was, that was great, and I had music teachers that were great. So there were people here and there, but mm -hmm. there were many of us as students so we each couldn't sort of have a caring figure, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, it was sort of a phase. And that's one thing that I, I do appreciate is, you know, no matter what you're going through, it's, it's for a time. It's not forever. It's just a time. And for many of the kids, their first year in high school, their first year in college is a very critical time. Mm -hmm. So how they're received, how they're uh, sort of accepted kind of sets the tone for the, the following years. Definitely. Now, so you were around 13, 17 when that happened? All those I think I was about, I think I was more about 15. 15 years Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, think about it for a second. He is the only one, the only male figure in his family, two sisters. How was it with your, to the family siblings at Rivalry? Well, I was the oldest. I, as a boy, I had my <laughs> own room. Oh. My sisters shared a room, but I had my own. Mm -hmm. So you say, Mom was a boy, like, yeah. oh, yeah. I didn't have to share my clothes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I grew up on public assistance, so we'd get in line uh, during certain times of the month, I believe, to um, get surplus cheese, milk, certain things that families would get on welfare. But mm -hmm. my mother, being the woman that she was, she um, pursued her education. Mm. She went back to college to get her... Um, BA, I believe, and then her master's at Simmons. Mm -hmm. So my mother was my inspiration. She was a mother and father. So watching her walking to the bus stop with her early in the morning mm -hmm. down Quincy Street in Roxbury, I watched my mother um, obtain her own and not be dependent, but become independent. Independent. Yeah. So basically what you're saying, no matter what it is that we are going through, mm -hmm. we just have to remember the key important thing, you are going through it. Correct. Therefore, it's not permanent. Correct. It is uh, temporary. Therefore, it is a decision that you're making mm -hmm. to, to see when I'm going through this, what it is that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. As we're talking, I just think of it. You know, people, when they are going through certain difficulties in life, mm -hmm. they usually think about, um, they become depressed. Mm -hmm. Your mom was not depressed. Well, either if she were, mm -hmm. she had to leave for those two, for you guys, mm -hmm. and she had to make sure that she lives for herself in order for you to Correct. for her to help you. Correct. And that is your inspiration. Mm -hmm. So hoping that, and your mother, mm -hmm. is there anything that she said? Is there anything that she she, she did during that time that makes you realize, hey, because there are some children who went through or were going through that the same. Mm -hmm. However, you don't have that passion to see, hey, my mom is my model, mm -hmm. my mom is my inspiration. Mm -hmm. So what it is that you think made you feel that, hey, I gotta step up my game? Well, I think what it is, is you, you learn by watching. And I mean, if the parent is, is positive and doing positive things, mm -hmm. and you understand what struggle is. I mean, when I was growing up, um, I was the antenna. If the TV wasn't <laughs> giving a good signal, a signal mm -hmm. yeah, the, my parent would have me go turn the antenna this way, or if my stepfather uh, wanted uh, cigarettes, he would say to me, okay, I want you to go to the store and get, get me cigarettes. Mm -hmm. There was not a sense of entitlement. Okay. You, you were, how can I say, you were obedient mm -hmm. to your parents, you were respectful, and you didn't have a lot of distractions 
of TV. There was one TV. Mm -hmm. That TV was in one room. Mm -hmm. The family would get together after dinner, and they'd go sit and watch that one TV. Mm -hmm. It was mostly black and white. Mm -hmm. um, you had maybe five channels in the Boston area, mm -hmm. so you had a choice of five stations. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You weren't exposed to the sexual content. There wasn't the cursing. There was. A, there was more respect. Mm -hmm. um, more of a sense of. Um, uh, 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 privileges. We had like um, the radios and turntables where you had a 45 or a 33. The 45 was a small disc, mm -hmm. the 33 was a bigger disc. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was more of uh, inclusion with the family. So um, you work together mm -hmm. um, for things, opposed to having your own Easy cell starts. phone, your mm -hmm. own radio, your own room, your own. We shared more sharing with a small. So what I understand from what you're saying is basically you, you, you learn how to appreciate the thing that you have and also family time was very important. Correct. Which I don't think that we have now. Mm -hmm. There are many reasons and I'm not blaming mm -hmm. anyone who is unable to give their children the time that they need. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to people, whomever I speak to, mm -hmm. the key thing is always the same. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. time with their parents. Correct. Mm -hmm. And for any parent right now, and I'm sure now, mm -hmm. Tobias, don't be with your parents. So what do you think that you still empower your children with, or empower anyone that mm -hmm. you that you encounter? Well, first let me say that I don't have children. Okay. Uh, my... Well, you have children. You work in the school. I became your child. Uh, he's been. He's been. I mean, more because I don't believe that parents. Uh -huh. The reason that I that I say that, mm -hmm. I don't believe that parents are people who just give birth. Correct. No, Correct. no, no, no. Correct. Because the thing that you do and mm -hmm. the organization space. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the thing that you've been doing. The reason mm -hmm. that you're here is mm -hmm. because I listen to your stories. Mm -hmm. I hear the thing that you have done in the community. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that you have children. Let's go. Okay. Let me <laughs> let me phrase it as uh, more of a mentoring show. Yes. Now, what's the question again? <laughs> I lost track. So basically, uh -huh. what it is that mm -hmm. you you learn from your parents mm -hmm. that every day, some way or another, that you are um, empowering others. Mm -hmm. What what it is that key thing that you think you can give to others or people who are listening, mm -hmm. who are parents, mm -hmm. either they have children or not, mm -hmm. but the impact that they make in someone else's life. The mm -hmm. fact that you are here mm -hmm. sitting with us mm -hmm. talking, you actually doing something for mm -hmm. the viewers right now. Looking at them. So what it is that you think that you learn from your parents that on a daily basis that mm -hmm. I feel that you are actually doing? I'm not going to tell you I know what it is. I think it's pretty much taking taking responsibility and being responsible. And I think each of us are here, put on the earth for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's it's sort of like, you know, when I um, was growing up and I lived in New York, I lived in Boston, I lived in Taunton, mm -hmm. a lot of people make excuses for their situation and circumstance. Mm -hmm. Um, my mother did not ask to be a single parent. Mm -hmm. um, I think I believe she was in an abusive relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. And before she told me, she had to make a choice. Do I live with a man that's abusive and unstable, or do I take my three children mm -hmm. and raise them on my own and leave? Okay. And for her to do that took a lot of courage. Courage, choice yeah. to actually make that. This is hard choice. Right, correct. Right. So if my mother can do that with three and I have mm -hmm. none, mm -hmm. I mean... As far as my purpose goes, if I can inspire, if I can help or assist, uh, why wouldn't I do that? So now I think I understand Tobias at a different level. Uh oh. Why am I saying that? When I first met you, I think I met you three, four, five times when mm -hmm. we finally had a connection mm -hmm. to say, and then I share my story, which is a part of my story, I guess, to have space, a support program for adults and community enrichment. The way that you open your heart, mm -hmm. you open your arm, you're ready to give me anything and everything that mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. just to make me mm -hmm. succeed. It has nothing to do with you. Correct. So, and it's not something that you did for me, mm -hmm. it's something that you are doing on a daily basis and you are doing for many in many people's lives. So therefore, I think mm -hmm. I became a some mentee. <laughs> a I mentee. became a mentee, yeah. yes. But is you hear me talk about my life, there are people who come into my life to help me. Mm -hmm. And we can't do anything by ourselves. I mean, no matter where you are, mm -hmm. what you do, someone either had to pave the way for you or to give you what I call an opportunity. Mm -hmm. If me helping you makes you a better person, helps you get where you want to go, it doesn't take away from me, it's sharing. It's sharing the resources. 
It's like money. Money is only good when it's moving. Yes. So people who collect money and sit on money, that's good for them. But what does it do for local business? What does it do for the community? It does nothing. Money has to circulate. And so does information. Awesome. Wow. Thank you, Dubai. No, my pleasure. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back. Welcome to Space, Space. Space. support program for adolescent and community enrichment. The story, the story. The story. The story. your story, but mine. There are different type of stories. Some are sad, others are amazing, and some powerful. What does your story look like? Come and share with us. How did you become who you are? What has been your biggest mistake and downfall? How did you get the strength to get back up? When did you realize that you were here for a purpose? What makes you cry? What makes you smile? How would you like to be remembered? What has been the biggest lesson you have learned? Your story, your story, your story. will make an impact in so many lives. Please come and share with us. Contact Space at 857-891-4328. Again, 857-891-4328 for more information. Thank you. Oh, guys, we are back. We are back with Tobias. It's no longer Toby. I'm sure people who knew you when you were little, it's like, that's Toby. No, it's yeah. Tobias. Correct. Awesome. Now, Tobias um, find a place to play. He will still be able to go to school. However, I wonder how Tobias is still playing because, you know, after um, high school, mm -hmm. your parents or everyone else pressuring us, you, you got to go to college. Some children say, oh, mama, I'm going to take a year mm -hmm. off, I'm going to travel. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? How did you know now? Because you, you went through the high school years. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the decision for you? Okay. Here's what, what happened. Once Peter P. George and uh, Bob Cesarini had me kind of on the right track, mm -hmm. I now was open to learning. Mm -hmm. However, my math and English skills might have been a little lagging because of the experience I had in junior high. Mm -hmm. I came into contact with a, 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 um, a my guidance counselor was Miss mm -hmm. Noise at Taunton High School. Do you remember the name? And Miss Noise, well, these are people that, these were my mentors. Yeah. She took a C slash D student mm -hmm. and was able to help me uh, turn my life around and my education around mm -hmm. in my sophomore year to uh, be uh, on track to mm -hmm. applying for in my junior year mm -hmm. for college. Okay. So I applied to about four different schools um, and I know one was CW Post one was, I think, Colby College in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And of the four that I applied to, I was happy to get into any one. But I think Colby at the time was a, a woman's school. Oh. And uh, they might have been looking to go co-ed. <laughs> but what happened was um, CW Post uh, uh, accepted me, oh. which is on in New York on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited that I was accepted to a college. And I was on an academic probation. So what happened is my first year I had to take special specialty math courses to get up to par. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time I became exposed to fraternities and sororities and black organiz black Greek letter organizations. Mm -hmm. Nothing like what you see on TV these days. Okay. But it gave me a sense of community. Okay. And um, that kind of directed me towards uh, community service. Mm. So. But you wanted to. But when you went to, when you went to college, mm -hmm. what was the idea? Because usually they ask you that question: What would you want to be? Do mm -hmm. you, you want to be a, a lawyer? I mean, right. all of the parents they want you to be a lawyer, a doctor. doctor yeah. You know those range. So how was that experience? How was that conversation with mm -hmm. mom or mm -hmm. for yourself? Mm -hmm. Actually, because I think children really go through that. Yeah. You know, wondering what is it that I want to do. So mm -hmm. how was that conversation? And yet again, to go to college, mm -hmm. what was the, the idea? What do you what, what what is that you wanted to? Do? Well, I had two choices. This is back in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Back in the seventies, you had um, World War Two going on. The, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it was the Vietnam World War going on. Mm -hmm. So if you went to college, you went to war. Oh. <laughs> My mother said her baby is not going to war, so it was okay. We're going to college. Okay. So wasn't that um, a choice really? Though? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't much of a choice. But I thought, and you know, I was under the impression I really wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. So I figured. Why? Do you know why? Well, I don't think I had a lot of. I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be in school. I didn't want to be a police <laughs> officer. But it looked like being a lawyer was kind of a professional job and I think back then Perry Mason was big on TV oh. so I mean you know from a television perspective mm -hmm. I think the big show on was Julia and Perry Mason mm -hmm. and Julia was a single black mother raising a son named Corey mm -hmm. she was a nurse so that was exactly what I wanted to do 
But um, I did think being a lawyer would be the route. So college was that track. Okay. So I went to CB Post, majored in political science. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I was a BC student, mm -hmm. but decided that I did not want to continue four more years or two more years to pursue the law. I just wanted to get out and make money. I wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. So I took a summer job working at a bank and um, was an income collections clerk mm -hmm. and thought, you know, banking was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it beat breaking leaves. So um, I, did, I did a summer job in banking, and once I graduated, I sent my resume to um, all the banks I could find in New York City mm -hmm. and started interviewing and um, became a banker. You became a banker? I started off as a correspondent, mm -hmm. which is someone that writes letters on behalf of the bank president. Okay. I was a very good writer. Oh, wow. So I would hand, handle customer service complaints or inquiries okay. for the Bowery Savings Bank in New York. Mm -hmm. I did that for two years and then decided I wanted to get into management. So I then started applying to management uh, banks, management training programs at banks in, in New York City, mm -hmm. and started with um, Bank of Commerce as an assistant branch manager. Oh, wow. And I did that for about four years, mm -hmm. and uh, felt I wasn't going any further than what I was. Mm -hmm. So I decided to get out of banking, and I had a calling to do community service work. Okay. So I started working with a councilman in New York City in Harlem, called Hilton B. Clark. Mm -hmm. So I worked with Hilton on doing community um, uh, community organizing, organizing mm -hmm. um, handling constituent complaints. Mm -hmm. And um, I set, served on a board as a representative of the poor. Oh. And I did that for two or three years, helping determine where community funds would be allocated. Oh, wow. And I enjoyed doing it. So mm -hmm. when my councilman was no longer eligible to run for re-election, I ran on my own. So I went on the ballots, went door to door, and mm -hmm. I was elected as a representative of the poor. Wow. Where I served for at least three years. And what did that mean to you? Oh, that was great. I was doing community service. Mm -hmm. um, I was working for the community and not so much for a business. Mm -hmm. I wasn't wearing a tie, coat, wingtip shoes anymore. <laughs> I was actually serving the community, and that was one of the most rewarding things I've done is working for the community. So, and then now, you are in New York, mm -hmm. and right now I'm in Massachusetts, and mm -hmm. I still have a chance to meet you. So what mm -hmm. brought you here? <laughs> well, um, at the bank that I started working in, I met my uh, wife, mm -hmm. who was then just a friend, and um, oh, we were pen pals. Yeah, we were pen pals for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And in 1994, um, uh, I decided, I proposed, and um, she didn't want to come to New York, so I came to Mass. Oh, she was in Mass? Yes. So, she's right. the reason that you're here. Correct. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so, you came here, and I'm mm -hmm. sure the question is, you know, finding a job, mm -hmm. how you're going to be able to, you know. Correct. So, how did you guys um, finally, I, I understand love, but you're here, mm -hmm. of course. And um, so what was the challenge, you know, for you to just leave what, what you were doing, what you were happy well, with? Well, understood. Based on my background, I came here. If I can live in New York, mm -hmm. well, you can survive in New York. You can survive anywhere. After spending 12 to 15 years in New York, there was no question about getting a job. Oh. So when I came here, um, I was not qualified to do the same type of work I was doing in New York, which was I worked for Harlem Hospital mm -hmm. as a health educator. And then I became a, um, uh, a unit manager at a men's shelter, which was Fort Washington Men's Shelter in New York. Mm -hmm. So coming here with my background and diverse experience, I wasn't concerned about work. Oh, wow. My first That's job good. was um, with the um, post office, and that did not work out. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, delivering the mail was not my thing. <laughs> what was it about? <laughs> delivering mail. That's what it's about. <laughs> Every day, delivering mail worked for some, but it wasn't my thing. I also worked with the Red Cross teaching CPR part-time. Mm -hmm. um, I then also worked for Boston University as a residence hall director. Mm -hmm. And I also worked for the Boston Globe um, wow. as a uh, production coordinator. So I have a very diverse background. Wow. Yeah. And, and now I'm working for the school department. What do you do for the school department? 
I'm the Emergency Management and Safety Director for Brockton Public Schools. Some people will t tend to say that this job, you actually created a job for yourself. This is the type of Tobias that we are dealing with. So you just ca you came to Brockton Public School, mm -hmm. and you know, well, it's not an easy... <laughs> I applied for a posted position, which was the Department of Education uh, allocated a grant mm -hmm. to the Brockton Public Schools for roughly $300,000 mm -hmm. for readiness and emergency management. Mm -hmm. So the school district of the city was looking for someone with a background in emergency management. Okay. Coming from the Red Cross, mm -hmm. uh, where we provide That's food, clothing, shelter, mm -hmm. and CPR and first aid, I did have the foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Ed provided a lot of training, um, FEMA provided training, so I was hired full-time for two years mm -hmm. to run this program. Well, just for the amount of the money that they had? Correct. Okay. It was a two-year program. Okay. And during that time, um, I think in Brockton, we made some very significant uh, accomplishments with school safety. Okay. Um, after the grant ended, uh, unfortunately, Newtown occurred where the... Mm where the uh, tragedy occurred there, the school district and the Brockton public school system uh, determined that um, this is something they needed to continue, and I applaud them for it, mm -hmm. because I'm probably the only person in the Massachusetts educational system that does full-time emergency management response. Mm -hmm. In some schools, you have someone that does it part-time, mm -hmm. or it's assigned to a school resource officer, oh, wow. but I do it full-time. And how was that experience? How is the experience? Too? It's a it's an amazing experience. It's you know teachers are hired and brought in to teach. They're not um, they don't come into a school setting or into the field of education trying to understand school shooting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, bomb threats, or how do they secure their rooms? How do they make, how do they deal with safety? Um, when it comes to the wider community. Mm -hmm. So a person like me comes in and this is what we look at. We look at what makes a school vulnerable. Mm -hmm. How can we secure and make the infrastructure of the school safer? And how do we teach parents, students, and the faculty as to what do you do if um, something, something were to happen? happen. Mm -hmm. Not so much internally, but internally as well as um, externally. Externally, yeah. definitely. Wow. From all the jobs, for all the journey, which one of the job or things that you have done that you feel that was most most likely rewarding to you? Mentoring and helping people that are trying to make their community or people that address needs. So any tool that I have that I can share, mm -hmm. whether it's a hammer, a screwdriver, mm -hmm. uh, a report, whatever I can do to support uh, someone's dream or someone's goal that's going to help the masses is, is rewarding because it's not about me. I'm just here for the moment. I uh, usually say that I believe that each one of us holds a piece of the puzzle. Correct. And but you're not only holding it, mm -hmm. you're actually putting it into place. And I thank you for that. My pleasure. Now to buy. So, oh. uh, I saw the <laughs> eyes move on that one. Uh, what would you say from all the journey, mm -hmm. where have you been? Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge and biggest mistake. Well, I don't like to look at things on the negative side as mistakes. I look at them as uh, opportunities. I mean, we any time you do something that's not typical, you face uh, it being viewed as negative or being viewed as a mistake. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to take chances. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't always follow the same template. Mm -hmm. um, same. So what happens for me is that I've had successes and I've had challenges, but mm -hmm. the, the, the main thing is to get back up, dust yourself off, and start each day as a new day. Not to rest on what you did yesterday or last year, mm -hmm. but make every day count. So each day that you wake up, to me, is a new start. Therefore, people who are in this situation right now that are facing challenges or think that they are unable to comprehend or not what they seeing that they just have to find a way to get out but what it is that makes you get up when you look at what's going on in the world across the country and you look at the number of uh, men of color particularly that are uh, incarcerated or um, uh, in grades um, for what what's the what's the point what's the purpose how do we stop the trend how do we inspire how
how come we don't have more men of color in leadership positions? Mm -hmm. Why don't, you know, you look at someone like uh, President Obama, which is, is great, but we can't stop there and rest there. You can't look at someone like Bill Cosby, uh, uh, Jesse Jackson, and say, well, they've fallen. I mean, we have to, we each have to be leaders in our own right. We have to take ownership of our communities, of our neighborhoods. Um, we just can't simply look at people on TV and make them our idols and when they fall, feel that it takes away from the rest of us. Okay. Now, for any young men, um, what would you say to them? Either because they, they follow the wrong track, the, they follow the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. What would you say as a young man and who still have a chance, mm -hmm. who had a chance to still become Tobias, what would you say to that young man who feels that you know, there's nothing that they can do either, they have a record, whatever it is that the reason or they're not understanding where they are when they're in school, because whatever it is that you do in school now, sometimes it's reported to the police, you come with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, a play to a toy that looks like something mm -hmm. that is not appropriate, the police come and then those children, they do have a record. What would you say to that young man? Each day is a new day. You can't change what's been done in the past, but you can change the direction you're going in. The idea is to find what your path is or to find positive people in your life and ask for help. I mean, um, yes. uh, there are agencies, there are groups. I know they have the 100 Concerned Black Men. They have uh, church groups. Find men that are positive or friends that are positive mm -hmm. and um, talk to them, sit down and try and make, make a plan. But the other thing is, what's different now that has changed over the years is the idea even of volunteerism. Mm -hmm. You may not have a certain trait, but if you're willing to volunteer and go out and help other people in the community, you'd be amazed at what opportunities that opens up for you. I don't know how to fix a car. I can't repair a car, mm -hmm. but I'm sure if I went to some of the mechanics around Brockton said, hey, I want to learn this mm -hmm. business. I'll volunteer one hour, two hours a week. Mm -hmm. Can you teach me? How many people are going to say no to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, just the whole idea of volunteering. If you want to be a, a medical, you want to go in the medical field, but you don't have a background in medicine, go volunteer at a nursing home. Mm -hmm. Go volunteer at a hospital. Everyone can use volunteer help. And mm -hmm. through that volunteering, you start to learn. It gives you that opportunity. Wow. Tobias, yes, what makes you cry? Onions. <laughs> <laughs> Be sad, onions. That's <laughs> short cutting it. Uh, jeez, pain. I mean, um, uh, I like to think of more what makes me laugh than make me cry. What I makes mean, you cry? <sighs> jeez, death, sorrow. But that's not a place I I stay in. I don't park there. I may visit, but I don't stay there. So we're not staying. We're not staying. Okay. What so, makes you laugh? Um, people. <laughs> um, good jokes. Um, all sorts of things. Humor. Um, all kind of things. I find I find more things make me laugh and smile than it make me cry or mourn. So what would be your biggest laugh? Probably news. The news. <laughs> Will, will make you cry. <laughs> that's, that's, it's not very positive, the news. Mm -hmm. So what will be the biggest lesson that you think you have learned? In life? Mm -hmm. I'm still, you're still learning, but um, so far, what would you say? Just to, no matter where, you, where I live, to be part of and to give back to the community. I mean, to be a positive influence wherever I go and to put something there and not take something away. So if I, I do anything or if, you know, anyone looks back over my life, I like to be someone that's contributed to a community and not come in and taken away from the community. I'm sure people are listening to your words, they wonder if you sing. Do you sing? Uh, only when no one else is in the room or <laughs> no one's listening. So basically that was my last <laughs> question for you. How would you like to be remembered? Whenever they were saying Tobias, that name Tobias. Whenever someone were to talk and say Tobias, what would be the most important thing for you that you say, hey, this is how I want to be remembered? Well, probably someone that was willing to help people less fortunate than himself 
uh, someone that was a positive mentor and someone that gave back to the community. I mean, as we look at history and we look at uh, people that are our ancestors, I mean, we are here based on their, their efforts, and I just want to contribute and add to that to build. One thing that I would like to come back to is wherever you are in your life, mm -hmm. whatever it is that comes to you, mm -hmm. your way or the challenges that you're able to look at as an opportunity, where and how do you think your faith sustains you? Oh, it's all about faith. you got to have faith. I mean, there are days you may not want to get up out of bed. There are days you may look out your window and see snow up to here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you put one foot in front of the other and you move forward. But every day is a different day. And um, as it said, I don't think God would put more on us than we could handle a bear. So, I believe. You heard it from here. Toby. Oh, Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> Go here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I truly appreciate the time that you took mm -hmm. to share your story. Mm -hmm. And I believe that anyone who is watching this show will be inspired, not only inspired, and transpired by the words and hopefully make a difference. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank is you. there any word that you want to say to us before you leave? Please, if you see me on the street, <laughs> it's Tobias. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Here you go, guys. You get it. Um, it was Tobias, our friend, who became our friend. My mentor, I am his mentee. PCC est une organisation non profite au service public qui vient d'être communauté. Space support, support programme pour adolescents, pour adolescents et enrichissement pour la communauté. Vini avec un programme after school, after school qui pourrait aider tout parent qui a une tête fait mal dans la fin juin non bon côté pour mettre des témoignages après l'école. Space Gay espace pour Timounio capable en sécurité pour développer les bonnes manières, de bonnes valeurs morales, savoir-faire pour capable sûr de tête pendant la société. Pendant la space, pendant la fête de voyage, il y a montré le langage, musique, littérature et exercice. Alors, ça va attendre pour mettre Timounio dans space. Relais Kounia pour réserver place ou la nouvelle session, ça va commencer. Prends le téléphone ou relais Kounia dans 857 891 40. 2328 pour capable enregistrer pour nouvelle session space, space support programme pour adolescents adolescent et communauté, communauté, communauté enrichissement. enrichissement space a tout profiter faire nous connaître que les coup pour adultes qui t'a aimé des compétences dans affaires computer dans affaires informatique et les space qu'on a pour réserver place ou la nouvelle session Attention, attention, tout artiste qui vive dans la ville là, ou qu'on chante, ou qu'on danse, ou qu'on joue un instrument, ou qu'on lit poésie, ou qu'on écrit bel texte, ou c'est un peintre, ou c'est un écrivain, ou c'est un artiste évangélique. Vite montrer talent dans deux zones. Pas oublier, relez nous dans 617 820 08 48. Pas oublier, pas quitter talent gaspillé. Vite montrer talent dans deux zones. 617 820 08 48 pour plus d'informations.